This is the next lesson on a series designed to increase your understanding of arrays and pointers, and also to see how they work together. Before we begin, there is one major difference between pointers and arrays that I need to address. Pointers can be represented and are represented in machine code instructions. In fact, pointer functionality is built right into your CPU chip. This is not the case with arrays. Arrays are therefore a construct of programming languages such as C, but they are not directly implemented as machine code instructions on your CPU the same way that pointers are. In fact, we use arrays simply as a mechanism to make working with pointers easier. Let's take a look at an example. So here we're looking at a simple array of text characters. At this point, you should fully understand that we are creating an array called myString and storing this text at the memory address identified by myString. Each character in Hello Reddit is stored one character at a time in its own unique address in memory, starting with the H and then the E and so on. Every character resides in memory immediately after the character preceding it. All of the characters are stored in memory one immediately after the other, each character having a memory address that, ex that is exactly one byte greater than the memory address before it. C has a unique syntax for dealing with arrays. For example, we have to use the brackets after our array name. When we want an array index, we have to put it inside of those brackets. These are all constructs of the C programming language and most languages have a similar construct for dealing with arrays. In this lesson we are going to implement a two-dimensional array of text strings using only pointers, not arrays, and this will help solidify the understanding that array indexing is really just a pointer with an offset. So here is the goal. First, I intend to create an array of four strings of text, each string a maximum of six characters in size. I will then create a printf statement that will print each of those four strings of text the same as if they had been arrays. So first of all, here are the four strings of text. Now why did I choose a maximum size of six characters? The longest word is three, which is five characters, and I also need to account for the null termination character at the end. That's why I set the maximum length to six characters. Whenever you perform an action that is designed to give you space to work with, this process is known as allocation. In this case, I'm allocating 24 bytes to hold what is going to become a four by six array. This is because we have four elements that will each have a maximum of six characters in size. Now, if I write this line of code, I'm allocating 4 times 6, which is 24 bytes, to use for the array myString. But in this lesson, I'm going to use a different method, but I'm still going to need to allocate 24 bytes. So there are various ways that I can allocate 24 bytes of storage. But for the purpose of this lesson, let's do it like this. Now why did I choose the characters that I did? Well, it just makes it easier to count. I can see that from here to here is exactly 10 characters and thus 10 bytes, and from here to here is 10 characters, thus 10 bytes, and here to here is 3, and then there's going to be an invisible slash n at the end, which makes for a total of 24 characters. Now this has no bearing outside of this lesson, but I thought I should clarify why I chose the characters I did, just in order to avoid any confusion. But one thing, I said we were going to do this without arrays, and yet I created an array called storage. Starting the lesson like this will make it easier to understand, but we will do this without any arrays when we're finished. So what you should know at this point is that I've created a string of text consisting of 23 visible characters and an invisible null termination character, which gives me 24 bytes that I can read or manipulate. Now I have achieved step one. I have obtained or allocated the total number of bytes I need for my task. In the next lesson, we'll go ahead and continue.